hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back for another incredible Hub 101. Woo! We are so grateful to have you here and joining us today. Um, so, as you all know, my name is Janelle Martin. I'm Imani Moore. Um, as some of you may be familiar with ACT already, ACT is a backbone agency for collective impact serving a network of nonprofit, faith-based, public, and private member organizations. As part of ACT, the Austin Community Hub is a safe space to intentionally and thoughtfully engage disconnected families and individuals in collaboration with our member base to securely connect community members to holistic services, such as career counseling, housing, continuing education, legal services, and much, much more. Part of these services include informing our community members about the different organizations that we work with, and the resources and programs that they have to offer. So we created Hub 101s. This month, we're getting the chance to deep dive into the new North Austin Center, which um, came together thanks to this awesome partnership from three incredible organizations, By the Hand Club for Kids, Grace and Peace Church, and Intentional Sports. We will begin with the presentation from two of the incredible team members who made this center happen. Andrea, the Managing Director of Partnerships and Development with By the Hand, and Naomi, non-for-profit director with Intentional Sports. And then we will have a chance for any questions after the presentation, so feel free to drop any questions that you have inside the chat. And with that being said, Andrea, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to take part in this month's Hub 101 session. My name is Andrea Yusefi, and we are just really eager and excited to be here. And I'm just pulling up our presentation now. So we are entering a new era in Austin with the North Austin Center. A little bit about our agenda today. We'll just start. This is, uh, many of you may have driven by and you see this huge facility um, and you say, how did that get there and what is it? Well, you're in the right place today. We're going to go over the history and the mission of the North Austin Center, all about the core partners, as are mentioned by the HAND, Intentional Sports, and the GAP Revive Center, which consists of the GAP Community Center and Grace and Peace Church. And then we'll go over all sorts of upcoming programs and events. Events. So to get started, oh wait, here we go. Okay, it's a little bit of a delay. So there are some core partners, and we'll dive into the history um, that founded the North Austin Center. The first partner, and you really spearheaded the entire project, is Pastor John Zayas, uh, the senior pastor of Grace and Peace Church. Uh, then is my colleague and, and dear friend, Donita Travis, who is the founder and executive director of By the Hand Club for Kids. And then we have a uh, new to uh, the Chicago and Austin area, and we're so excited for him to be part of the team, is Andy McDermott, who's the founder and chief development officer of Intentional Sports. But here today, you have your Hub 101 host. You have myself, and then I'm going to introduce you to my Naomi colleagues. Mays. Hi, my name is Naomi Mays. And so Naomi is the director of a nonprofit at Intentional Sports, and we'll share uh, more as we go. So I'm going to start with um, a short video uh, about the facility and a little bit about the history. And we would love for any of you to come uh, do a tour, come participate in a program, but a picture is worth a thousand words and a video is worth a million. So uh, we'll play this video just so you can learn a little bit about what we have to offer at the North Austin Center. The children and families of Chicago's West Side were made for more. But it's hard to believe for more when obstacles are relentless. From increased risk of dropping out of school to elevated risk for obesity and decreased life expectancy, from food deserts and local violence to a lack of safe opportunities to learn and play. And when hope is precarious, it feels impossible to dream for more. But that is precisely what North Austin Community Center was created to do believe in and provide for more. Anchored by three extraordinarily faithful organizations, by the Hand Club, Grace and Peace Revive Center, and Intentional Sports, the North Austin Community Center is a beacon of holistic hope for an entire community. 
A stunning new campus sits on 10 acres of previously abandoned land and boasts 150,000 square feet of state-of-the-art classrooms, training spaces, and indoor and outdoor fields and clubs. This professional-level facility for sports, education, and wellness will close the opportunity gap for our West Side youth. Here, by the hand, will serve 400 students, mind, body, and soul, in its after-school program. Grace and Peace will provide holistic care through its wraparound services for families, including one of the city's largest food banks. And in partnership with the Chicago Fire Soccer Club and the Jason Hayward Baseball Academy, Intentional Sports will offer athletic and academic programs and community-building activities that will build character and radically alter the West Side. Serving over 25,000 years annually, there simply isn't any place in the country having this kind of impact for creating this much of them. Just by remediating this blighted land, we will reduce violent crime by 29%. Our after school and sports programs mean our youth have a better chance of not getting involved in the criminal justice system. By promoting good health, nutrition, and physical activity, we can reduce childhood obesity and increase life expectancy. And by creating over 150 permanent jobs, we can drastically impact the local economy. Whatever you think is possible, whatever has been done before, whatever impact you hope will be made, imagine So we have the coolest facility in Chicago right here in Austin. It's amazing. Um, and that's just a little bit um, about the project that we've uh, been working on for so long. Uh, and to kind of start and say, well, how did this happen? How did we get someone like Jason Hayward to Austin, to hang out in Austin, to train in Austin, to coach kids in Austin? How did we even get here? Um, it's a long story that goes all the way back to 1991. Uh, Pastor John was a young guy back then. He actually played football and he started attending Grace and Peace Church. He played football through CPS. And over a decade later, he was called to be the senior pastor of Grace and Peace Church. Right around that time in 2000, Andy McDermott, who started Intentional Sports, he left Northwestern University and began a career in professional soccer. So this is 23 years ago, and somehow all these folks, their paths intertwined to get uh, this incredible project off the ground. And so Donita in 2001, she had a, a intense, intense and successful career in advertising and she left advertising to become a full-time volunteer and start by the hand club in the Cabrini Green uh, neighborhood in 2001. Uh, we had some uh, faith-based leaders who invited by the hand club to Austin in 2007. So we opened our first by the hand club in Austin in 2007, right over on Laramie and Lake on Church in the Block. I actually was in college at the time and I used to volunteer at Church in the Block and I would take the green line and I'd walk on uh, Laramie into Church in the Block. And we were in this, I was just telling Naomi, <laughs> we were in this church basement there was like 150 kids in a really small room. We were doing homework help and um, we were eating dinner in there and we were crumbling up pieces of paper and throwing them in the trash cans playing basketball. So to know that's where we started and to see where we are today is truly a miracle. In 2008, that is when Gap, Grace and Peace, purchased the former Glidden Paint Factory in North Austin. They had this opportunity to, um, to see what they could do with this facility. And Pastor John said, what if we hit you know, this huge empty building, all this vacant land, what if we restore it and we make it a social service hub for children and families and the community? And so they didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of resources. And it took them almost 10 years uh, I was in the facility back uh, before it was renovated. There was a foot and a half of water. There were um, 
just some people in need who were living in the vacant building who needed help and services to be relocated. It was a project not for the faint of heart. It really takes a bold leader to say, hey, yes, this is where we're gonna build the community center, uh, wading through that water and sewage. Um, and from 2009 to 2018, they uh, built over 25 jobs, had over 500 volunteers and brought over 300,000 in uh, donated materials to the Gap Revival center. Um, all while there's this adjacent and uh, piece of land that was vacant and um, a brownfield, so environmentally polluted. And Pastor John and the members of the church actually would go out and mow the grass and take care of that land and try to make it look presentable and at least less of an eyesore in the community. Uh, you all know Austin is one of the largest communities in Chicago. I live here in Austin. And to have such a large space in a community that's completely vacant is just such an incredible eyesore and um, feels hopeless for the community. Pastor John and Donita, through their work in Austin, they met pretty much around 2001. Um, and the idea is, well, what if we make this a campus? And so by the hand in 2018, we didn't really know what we were going to do, but we bought an acre and a half of property right over here, if you can see my mouse, uh, in North Austin. And we weren't sure what we were going to do. Um, Gap, Grace and Peace, they opened the Revive Center. Uh, it's one of the largest food banks in the city. They're open uh, today till two o'clock and I'll share more, but they serve 1,500 families a week. It's a choice pantry, so you get to go from everything from meat and poultry and fish to pre-made salads and meals to fresh ingredients to make food to diapers and formula. So anything you could need, they have at this facility at the Revive Center. Uh, since 2018, they've given away over 10 million pounds of food. Uh, they have a partnership with World Vision and they have a storehouse in the basement. So they'll also do disaster relief, so tornado relief, hurricane relief, because they have uh, emergency supplies, uh, because it was a, a factory, it was the Glen and Paint factory, it was a warehouse, so now it's being repurposed into uh, serving the community. There's also a hub for nonprofits and social services in different spaces on the campus. So that opened in 2018, but there was still this vacant land here. So between 2007 and 2021, by the hand, uh, even though we started in Cabrini, Austin became our home. Our legal headquarters at By the Hand is in Austin. We've brought over $60 million in private funding to Austin through um, uh, knocking down the former uh, nightclub, a uh, 417 nightclub, and building a community center over on Lake and Laramie, uh, where we serve 250 kids who are in Chicago public schools. And then across the street were all those old empty warehouses. We helped uh, with the Moving Everest Charter School that's a by the hand club in the after school hours and the Moving Everest School during the day. So we've brought over 100,000 square foot of programming space in Austin. We've created over 500 temporary construction jobs and over 62 permanent jobs during our time in Austin. So we've had over 88% of our students graduate high school, 86% enter higher education, and we are a faith-based organization. So over 80% of our students uh, proclaim to follow Jesus, which is important uh, to us at By the Hand. So here's where I got roped into this project. I was on maternity leave and Donita called me and I don't know if it was the drugs, but I had had my baby less than a week uh, before she called me. And she said, what are you doing? Are you up for some community engagement work? And I don't know, maybe I was just sick of being in the house, but, but I said, sure. And um, we surveyed for the neighborhood at, to develop a vision of what could happen on this blank sheet of uh, land here in North Austin. And I think because I'm, I'm very tiny in real life and I have this newborn baby, so I'm knocking on people's doors and they're answering the door. So we were able to do over 3,000 surveys um, to ask uh, my neighbors and ask the community uh, what uh, they would like to see at this facility and something for kids, something for children, a gathering place, a meeting space, something for families uh, is what we kept hearing in these surveys. We found out in this process, though, that there was actually plans for the city for a commercial solar farm to be on this property. And so the neighbors gathered together and they went to the city and they fought against a solar farm. 
And so we uh, actually won that fight, a rare fight against the city where we won. The city said, okay. And it kind of put this project on a fast track because if they said, if we're gonna nix this solar field, your plan better be real. <laughs> and so we got to work in community engagement, doing focus groups. We did focus groups with students and parents and uh, community members. And the big one was fundraising. Okay, we have this idea, but how are we gonna raise the money to do it? And we had this moment, uh, especially where our neighbors were saying, hey, we really want a place for our youth to play sports. And there was this meeting where, um, we were saying, by the hand, we're an after-school program. Grace and Peace, we're a church. We we don't know how to run sports programming, and maybe we can't do it. And we uh, uh, we had a board member named Brian Musso who worked with Pastor John and who worked with uh, Donita, and he was good friends with Andy McDermott. They played uh, sports together at Northwestern, and they had this dream all the way back in 2000 of of, wow, we have all these amazing sports opportunities. We wish that kids in a neighborhood like Austin would have these opportunities. And so Andy uh, joined the team in 2020 to bring high quality sports opportunities, professional level sports opportunities to Chicago's West Side. And from there, it's history. We broke ground in 2021. Uh, we created over 200 temporary jobs. We've invested, it's, the official number is nine and a half million in minor, minority subs and owners, but it's about 10 and a half million because of um, minority subs and owners who aren't certified that we were able to bring local Austin businesses and uh, subcontractors into our project. And we had our grand opening in February. So for those of you who, draw, who dealt with the construction and the traffic and drove by and you're like, how did this happen? And what is it? This is the whole story and the whole background. So we started uh, with this vision. So it's a first of its kind nonprofit campus for sports education and wellness located here in Austin. We have our three nonprofit organizations and it's all about equitable access to education, sports and holistic wellness services. We'll serve 25,000 individuals annually and we'll provide more than 100 hours a week uh, for the community to participate in sports and other activities. So we started with this uh, piece of land that was environmentally polluted and pretty disgusting. You actually sank two feet into the ground because a company was illegally dumping wood chips on it. So it was this weird squishy feeling when you walked on this land. This is where we started. And this is what we've been able to do in partnership is uh, develop uh, the campus. And we still have some outdoor work that we're doing, but here's where we are today. So inside, uh, again, here in Austin, we have Chicago's largest indoor turf field. It's the Chicago Fire Turf Field House. Right here in Austin, we have the largest indoor turf field. We have the Jason Hayward Baseball Academy. So indoor baseball, can you believe that? Doesn't matter if it's a yucky day like today, you can play indoor baseball here at the North Austin Center. Um, and we're, we're excited that Jason Hayward has become such a strong champion of Austin and a partner. We have two, I repeat, two full-sized courts. Uh, the wood is NBA regulation. So we have kids come in here who uh, can actually play like an NBA player. And we have two of these courts that can be used for volleyball, pickleball, uh, futsal, which is kind of a soccer, indoor soccer um, activity. Uh, all sorts of activities can happen on these courts. We have... Uh, an esports lab. Some of you may be familiar with esports, but if you have young kids, they love playing virtual sports. And there's even a, a coding component of the esports program where kids will learn about computers and coding and its incentive where, hey, get your homework done and then you can go play and hang out and maybe even play with some professional athletes and hang out and play video games. Uh, one of my favorite rooms is we've heard in all of our surveying and door knocking, there's just not enough meeting space in Austin. So we have a multi-purpose room and auditorium, and it truly is multi-purpose. We have Zumba classes in here. We have community meetings in here. We have opportunities for community theater 
job trainings. Alderman Mitz has had her community meeting in here. It can sit almost 500 people. So it is a huge blank canvas space that can be used for birthday parties to, um, to uh, different types of community events. Uh, so we're really excited about this space. And then 40,000 square feet of the overall building is uh, by the hand club spaces and classrooms. So we partner with schools and we have student, we'll have 400 students in the after school hours in by the hand club. So that's the space. There's even more than that. We'd be here for way more than an hour if we went over all the spaces. So again, I invite you uh, for a tour and our contact information will be given uh, at the end of this presentation. So please, you know, we'd love to walk you through. Again, I live across the street, so I literally can be here anytime and walk you across, walk, walk you through the facility. And so a lot of you probably want to know, okay, how can I get involved? And uh, who is Intentional Sports? They're a new nonprofit to the Austin neighborhood. So I'm going to kick it over to Naomi to just share more about Intentional Sports. Hi, everyone. Um, so I must say I am extremely, extremely eager um, to be here today to speak about this amazing project that, you know, we have going on here at the North Austin Center. Um, also eager and excited to be here with my dear friend, Andrea, um, to speak about this. Uh, so in, we're in the same room, just so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, so I'm, I, you'll see me speaking yeah. back and forth to her and also looking at you guys um, here on the screen. Um, but like I said, intentional sports, why are we here? Um, the conversation, I guess, you know, when I came to this project, a lot of the reactions were, why is there this massive building <laughs> on the corner, you know, off of Laramie and Grand in the middle of North Austin, right? And you would think, well, why not? I think, why not? Why not? Why can we not have um, these professional level facilities and access to um, quality programming and something that is nice and of quality and of size, right, in these communities? Um, so to put a little bit of background to it, here's some numbers. Young people living in undersourced communities, and Andrea, I'm pretty sure you can speak to this, you, you know, living in the neighborhood and just being able to see um, families on a day-to-day -day basis and how people interact and how kids are able to um, enter into programs and enter into sports, right? Kids without sports are four times um, less likely to play, you know, they're four times less likely to play in under-resourced under communities. Of that percentage that actually do play sports, right, you have a six-time um, chance that you're more likely to spit, quit, I'm sorry, um, <laughs> quit sports due to cost. So financial, there's financial barriers there. You're eight times more likely to drop out of school, seven times more likely, right, to be convicted of, of, of crime. Um, in the, a lot of times also in these communities, people don't have resources to um, the correct nutrition. And so obesity becomes an issue, especially in the black and brown communities. As you see, um, you're 40% actually, 40% more likely um, to be obese than you know, your Caucasian uh, counterparts. And so when you look at these numbers, you say, well, if pricing and, and being able to economically, you know, be able to afford these programs um, is something that you have in these communities. If it can decrease all of these statistics, well, why is it not offered um, in the communities that need it most? And so that's what we're here to do at Intentional Sports. Our mission is to be able to provide high quality programming to students um, at an affordable cost. We believe that everyone deserves to play. So I don't think that there should be a kid in a neighborhood or any neighborhood that's not afforded those same opportunities as you would if you had money. We don't think that um, finances should ever stop. Finances or anything, you know, should stop a kid from having access to sports at the least or a place to play. And I know, you know, Andrea, and I think it's probably more of a bigger issue today when you have kids where they don't have places to go. We were just speaking about like the park district. You can go to the park district. You may be able to go to a park in the neighborhood, but there's an issue with safety, you know, and all of these um, obstacles and, and hurdles that you kind of have to go to is just being a child, which is 
very, it's, it's kind of sad to think about, you know, when we were little, you were able to just go outside and play and climb a tree. Till the street lights came ex- on. I was just going to say, till the street lights came on and you can go outside and, hey, mom, I'll be back, you know, I'll be back at seven. But there were those opportunities you felt safe to do so. You felt um, just at ease, right, mm-hmm. to go out and play, to be a child. And I think without having those resources um, now in today's society, and then, I mean, I mean thinking about COVID too, mm-hmm. we had COVID for two years where people right. weren't even able to go outside and play. And so coming out of that to be able to give the kids the opportunity to just be kids is, is um is very valuable and um, very meaningful, I think, to the community. And so that's our mission is to be able to provide a place that's safe, a um, place of excellence, respect, and to be of service to the people in the community of Austin. So how do we change it? So no pun intended, but we intentionally um, created these playing spaces at a massive size, right? So the size of this building, you've got over 150 square feet of facility of space for kids and community to come and enjoy themselves. Um, it's a 10 acre campus, which is amazing. We have the largest indoor turf, which Andrea um, showed the space and the pictures do it no justice. Like she said, you guys have to get in for a tour. So my son, he's five. He ran into the middle of the turf field and was so excited. And then all of a sudden he froze and he ran back to me and I said, what's the problem? And he said, it's like swimming in the deep end of a pool <laughs> um, because the turf field really is that large. It is it is that large to get people's and, and especially the children's reactions um, when they walk in the building. It's almost, we even got a reaction. We had Chicago Fire um, had their plays program here and a kid walked into the turf and said, wow, this is better than the United Center. And it was, it was, it was crazy to hear, but for me, it just warmed my heart because it's like our, our purpose um, in creating these spaces in the way that we did with the quality that we did um, was just for that fact that kids not only have a place to come and play, but it's a place where they want to be. It's a place that they have um, value. They, it has value. Exactly. It adds value. It's a place that they can take pride in and say like, no, I, I deserve this too. I have access to this. This is something that that I can get to. And it's right in my backyard. It's right in my neighborhood. This is my home. This is my family. Um, and it's, it's another way to build the community um, intentionally, right, creating these spaces. So you'll hear me say a lot that North Austin Center tailors to a wide spectrum. That spectrums in all different categories, physically, economically, right, spiritually, every any, anything you can think of. I think this is the place of collaboration. Um, and, and participation and hope and where community has come together, we've bantered and said, hey, everybody deserves to play. Everybody deserves um, those opportunities, right? To, to kind of learn and grow and, and figure out what it is to be a, what a, a um, outstanding citizen, <laughs> right? Um, and, and what it means to build those bonds. Um, so, so that's what we're here for at Intentional Sports. This was a massive project here on the screen. I've showed some, just a few of um, our partners here at Intentional Sports who have bantered together to make this happen. This was not an easy feat. It's still not an easy feat. And when you have something of this magnitude um, to not only impact Austin, but to hopefully impact communities across the states, right? This is something that I feel like this project is the blueprint for the future. This is the blueprint for the future where you have high quality um, professionals being able to provide service and people who are giving people who um, banter and believe in the mission of just serving and giving back to the community. It takes it takes a lot and it takes people, good people, right, to do work and do hard things such as, you know, Andy, Andy would mention, do hard things because this is not necessarily a project that made pencil on paper, but is definitely for the masses and it's definitely something needed in a community. And so these are some of our um, trusted partners and, and people that, that believed in us. Um, so the, the structure of it. So we've had a lot of questions, right, on how do you have this self-sustaining model where you can provide these programs 
to anybody in the community at cost or for free, or, hey, I'm not able to um, stretch that wide financially, but I, I still want quality. I still want to be trained by the best. I still want to um, say, I still want to come to the gym and know, hey, there's a possibility that a scout would be here and this could get me, this could get me to college. These are people who can actually, you know, help me with my homework. These are, you know, this is a safe space to send my child after school. Um, there's two different sides to it. We have internal activities, which are the activities, you know, for the community. I have a few listed there, our after school programming. Everything is low cost or no cost. And we also provide um, scholarships for our external activities, which is going to be the tournaments, the leagues and clinics, um, bringing in people to come and utilize the space and, you know, for those external teams. We take the funding from the external activities to filter back into the after school activities and kind of give back to the community. That's the entire purpose. We are not here um, like a traditional, right? It's not a traditional center. We are very much a nonprofit. So don't come and see this massive space and forget that we are a nonprofit. We are not for profit. Um, everything that is donated to us through these activities actually goes back to the community. So never, ever, ever forget that we are um, here for the masses. But as you know, it it costs to provide, which is all, which is always a deal, right? This if this was something easy, we'd have this center in a million different places across the states, um, and a million different people would be doing it. But this is something that that it it takes a little bit of time, um, and it takes care to kind of put back in there and get something that's working. And so this is what we've come up with on how to balance that act and and still be able to provide this at cost. In the uh, Austin Coming Together Quality of Life Plan, there's um, a number that says 80% of all discretionary spending leaves Austin to nearby suburbs. And this is actually an opportunity for the nearby suburbs to come to Austin and spend their discretional spending so we can invest it back into the Austin community, into the after school programs, the community events, and, uh, and access to the space. So it's a really exciting model that kind of flips that narrative on its head. Mm -hmm. And again, about that too, I think when you talk about community, this also is a unique project in the fact that it brings people not just here on the west side of Chicago, but this is states across, right? So when we have those tournaments, how do you get kids from Florida that play basketball in the same room as, as kids from any of our neighborhoods? How do you get people from Barrington and, and, and what other, you know, other communities, how do you get them all in one space? This is how we do it with those external activities. We invite everyone into the building. There's all, you know, all type of sports and activities for um, people to get involved in. But again, this is a community place. We've structured it where anyone could have access or, or could get involved into what we have going on. Um, and that, again, creates opportunities for the kids. A few of our um, programming app, um, opportunities and ways that you guys can get involved. We have um, academies starting. These are after school programmings. It will have the Jason Hayward Baseball Academy along with our basketball academy for kids uh, first through eighth grade. For everyone on this call, use the code uh, coupon code resident 80, resident 80. So those will start um, in April 4th. So we have the after school programs. What does Resident 80 do? So Resident 80 is an 80% off coupon. So everything is already, it's, it's low cost. We offer you this 80% off. You'll pay 10 bucks for 16 sessions, which is almost unheard of. And these are not, th th these are not open gym sessions. I tell you. If real you want, coaching with real coaches. Exactly. These are real professional athletes. So we have you know, for example, for uh, basketball, Trey Demps is actually a, a professional basketball player who came back from overseas, and he's going to be doing tro uh, programming for that. So these are quality people, people who know about these sports, people who can actually, you know, put something back into the kids and get you some quality, uh, quality training. And again, those opportunities will show evident in these classes. So like I said, Resident 80, use that coupon. Um, and there are limited slots. So you wanna get that done as soon as possible. 
Uh, we have a high school academy strength and training, which will do personal training for um, um, tra personal training for our athletes. So this is all around athletes who want to get quicker, who want to jump higher, who want to lift more, right? This is for our Even high school students. Keep, keep them safe. I joke that if Derek Rose was in our speed agility training program, we would have won a championship. So it's really, really exciting <laughs> yeah, and, to have this great speed and it keeps kids safe so they don't get injured when mm -hmm, they play. Exactly. Safety, safety is always, and again, that goes into quality though, yeah. right? So when you have a professional that that understands the protocols that understands training and why we're doing certain movements you not only learn you not only progress but your safety is is very much valued um and that comes at just having knowledge knowledge of the sport and what you're coaching another thing to mention for our after school academies which is really awesome is we do provide um free hydration and nutrition so that's another thing it's a it's a great deal 50 bucks for the um, for the 16 sessions. You come twice a week. We have tutorings in the after school session. So even if your class is not going on, if you don't have a certain class going on, you have access to the space all week for the kids enrolled in these programs to come and get um, help and assistance with their homework. So that is a priority as well. We talk about high quality sports. Well, you gotta be <laughs> qualified you got to be eligible Passing your <laughs> to, to yeah to yeah. get to that that's that place you want to be at you know at a professional level but we do take um education very serious at intentional sports and that is another um point of ours as well mm -hmm. emphasis point of emphasis and really that's why they're called academies rather than signing your child or loved one up for oh i'm in a baseball class it, it's not a class it's an academy there's support and community and accountability and health and wellness it's really a, a lot more holistic than if you just signed up for a class exactly yeah good point um, so yeah, here's some more activities. We have travel teams and you can just scroll through these. We have travel teams, um, basketball pickup for adults. So the adults in the community can um, get access to the space as well. Super excited about our Zumba class that'll start. Ladies and gents, if you're into Zumba, come and lose some of those calories, burn those calories. It's only five bucks. Um, a class, but this will be um, a, a super exciting and, and uplifting time for some Zumba and intentional sports. Um, another thing we have, so our Easter egg extravaganza, we partner with Grace and Peace, um, and they'll have 10,000 eggs for the kids. This is totally free. So make sure you guys join, go on their website and look up that link. It's also a Facebook event as well. So if, well, we're on Facebook. So make sure you go and follow them on Facebook um, and sign up for this. But the kids will get to sign up for free. They'll have the Easter egg hunt. There'll be food and, and tacos and et cetera. So Space painting, be, candy bags. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a blast. It'll, 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 it'll be a, a fun, fun time on Sunday. So um there's, um, and I can show you, uh, we can go through if we have yeah. time just how to register, but you can go ahead and just share a little bit of how to register for some of these activities. Yeah, so yeah, right, right on cue. So registration at Intentional Sports. So everything is going to go through our website, which is www.intentionalsports.org. Make sure you don't put international. We are intentionalsports.org. Um, you're going to scroll down to this big green um, bar at the bottom, and that is going to get you access to all of our programs, uh, registration, if you want to see the calendar and what activities that we have going on, to sign up for an account, right? Everything is going to go through here, and so you can get to this page, you can sign up, and I think what will be most relevant uh, for most of our athletes and customers and spectators is going to be the activity and league registration. That's where you're going to see everything that's going on in the facility. So if you have questions about that, um, this is the location to go. So you go to our website for access, you click on the registration link, and then you can click here uh, for a list of those activities. Again, we are on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. This is where you will get activity updates. So if you want to know, hey, what's going on this week, make sure you follow us. We're posting daily about different activities that are coming up. 
updates. There's always uh, volunteer opportunities if you want to get involved in, in programming and in sports, if you want to um, get involved in operations and help run some of our tournaments. There are volunteer opportunities um, that are posted on there. We also have this new series that I'm super excited about. It's our coaches series that we're going to be posting um, the people who will actually be running the program, which is super interesting. Um, there are people from the community, so you might even see a coach that you know or that you're familiar with that's going to be running some of these programs in clinics. So um, like I said, follow us on all of these um, social sites and make sure you sign up for our um, newsletter too. And that is on our website. If we have time to show you, show them the website. Um, but I will give it back to Andrea to kind of speak about grace and peace. And I'd be amiss if I didn't say I absolutely love grace and peace. They do amazing, amazing work in the community. They are extra, they, they are pillars. They are pillars. They can't be Austin. here today because they're getting ready for that Easter egg hunt. It's such a <laughs> exactly. big undertaking that they were like, no, we can't be here exactly. today. But they had confidence that we could hold the floor down for them. So we are all like a surrogate employees of each other's organizations at times. So I'll put my grace and peace hat on now. <laughs> um, also huge kudos to Naomi. Y'all, Intentional Sports opened in February. They've put all this programming together in just a few short months, um, even today, there's spring break programming and the fields are full. And I see some of my neighbor's kids out there playing sports. And I'm just really excited about if this is how we're starting, what's everything to come. So mm -hmm. stay tuned. Definitely follow Intentional Sports on social media because you'll see all those opportunities. Um, so Grace and Peace, it's the Grace and Peace Revive Center. It's this facility right here. It consists of a couple nonprofits, but the two large ones are Grace and Peace Church, which is a wonderful Sunday church program. They have small groups and ministries, in-person, online, youth programs, uh, so many different opportunities. And then within in, uh, the Revive Center is also the Gap Community Center, and they do so many children's and youth programs. They're hosting the Zumba classes. Um, I, I mentioned they have the uh, Choice Food Pantry. It's Tuesday and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This isn't like canned goods in a paper bag. It's real high quality. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, don't forget to mention the store. So mm -hmm. the Choice Food Store, I think, shows the thought that they actually put behind it right to mm -hmm. be able to go on a store and kind of kind yeah of you can shop people. yeah you can shop for what you like so there's you know if you want a bag of onions if you want a bag of avocados if you want milk you go through like a store and they're actually uh, have a grant from the greater chicago food De depository to build it out like a formal real store so we're excited for that to come on campus but right now it still is is a store and you get a shop for what you would like on tuesday and thursdays from 10 to 2 p.m but highly encourage you if you need any anything, um, they make it happen. Um, they're just real community servants. And if you are having problems with housing, if you're having problems with domestic violence, if you um, are having problems finding a job and have a difficult to employ background, they do lots of re-entry work. So Grace and Peace, the Gap Community Center is just an incredible resource. Some photos of just what it's like. Uh, this is a Valentine's Day community cooking class they had. This is last year's Juneteenth celebration. And this is some shopping going on um, in the food uh, choice food uh, market. And then I'm just going to share a little brief overview about By the Hand Club um, and just what we do. So we are a holistic after school program. We started in 2001 in Cabrini Green with just 16 kids. And now we serve over 1,700 kids with the majority of students being from Austin with over 1,000 kids here in Austin. We uh, walk with our students and we wanna help them have abundant life. We're a faith-based program and we focus on that mind, body, and soul. So the way we uh, work with students is most students are referred to our program for not meeting reading standards. So once uh, they're enrolled in our program, all barriers to learning are removed. They get a bus that picks them up from their homeschool. They come to buy the hand club, they get dinner, homework help, tutoring. We have a reading program that we work on with our students. Um, and then we do fun enrichment activities. Here at North Austin, those enrichment activities will be incredible sports opportunities and dance opportunities and using uh, the space here. Uh, we uh, do everything from one-on-one uh, -on -one mentorship to we have students who are at our Moving Everest sites who are in a STEM program where they're learning how to build computers. So we have all sorts of different programs. And then we bring our kids home 
home um, right to your doorstep on a bus and we scholarship children into our program. So 100% of it is free and no cost. Uh, we're located all throughout Chicago. As I mentioned, we were founded in Cabrini Green as a partner of Chicago Housing Authority. And then uh, Altgeld Gardens uh, invited us to come down um, and serve in Altgeld. And then in uh, 2007, we came to Austin. We're in Inglewood. We have the Moving Everest Partnership. And then we actually have an enrichment center for high schoolers downtown. So all, all of you know, our high schoolers go to high school all across the city. So they get to meet up on Friday nights and explore their talents at this enrichment center. We have a recording studio and music classes and an art center and a photography lab and um, social media, entrepreneurship classes and all sorts of great activities. Um, and then we have uh, our new uh, North Austin site here. So those are just uh, our locations at By the Hand. Uh, as I said, we serve over 1,700 children, almost 1,000 in Central Austin. Uh, 415 North Laramie, that's where the 417 nightclub was. That's the orange and gray building. Those students are referred uh, from local Chicago public schools, partner schools. And then at Moving Everest Charter School, that's the green and the gray building. Building. That's a partnership with the charter school where kids who are enrolled in the school have the option of staying by the hand club in the afternoon. Here at North Austin, we're going to do a model like the uh, orange and gray building where we're partnered with local schools. We're going to build up to 400 students, but we're starting with 150 students on Monday. So students start Monday. They've been referred from our partner schools and we're starting kindergarten through fourth, but we'll go K through young adults. Um, we're just going to build to it slowly. So some of our impact is just really exciting. Our kids uh, who are in our program, they increase their confidence. Over 98% uh, have graduated high school, which we're so proud of. Um, almost 90% have moved on to higher education. Um, most of our kids, 90% um, pass all their classes. Again, that's huge because kids are referred to our program for failing school and, um, and being at risk uh, for failing. And then we have our uh, care programs where we do eye exams, dental exams, um, meals, and over the last 20 years, we've served over 6,500 students. So we're excited to start serving students here in North Austin. Uh, the last thing we wanna mention, and we're excited to take all your questions, is we are hiring. We are really excited uh, by the Hand Club Intentional Sports. We love hiring um, people from Austin. That's what we want to do. We wanna hire our neighbors. Uh, so there are different career opportunities at By the Hand Club. Uh, being a team leader is a 29 hour a week part-time job with full-time benefits. Um, we have full-time jobs available as well. Um, and that's working with our students and changing their lives in the afternoon and just pouring into them. We have spiritual uh, directors and then intentional sports. We call them I sports for sure. It kind of, kind of helps <laughs> sometimes. An intentional sports can be a mouthful. Um, they're hiring coaches, mentors, tutors. So uh, both of these links uh, are live. And please, again, we're, we're about to share our contact information. If, even if you have questions, well, what's it like to work at By the Hand? What can I expense? Or what, what, what can I expect? Or what is it like to work at iSports? Uh, you're blessed to be in this Hub 101. So you have direct access to contact the two of us. And we would love to just share the different opportunities. Um, and look at it's a fun team, guys. It's a real fun team, everyone. Um, we really uh, uh, love what we do. We're passionate about what we do, and we're here for the mission and uh, excited to, to serve. So with that, a little bit of contact information. Uh, North Austin, the North Austin Center is not owned by Intentional Sports or by the Hand Club or Grace and Peace Church. It is, has a chief operating officer that can help you with space rentals. If you want to have a community meeting here, if you want to have an event here, those requests go to Ryan Santos Leslie. His email is Ryan Santos Leslie at northaco.org. Um, so those types of requests go to Ryan. Naomi, all requests about how do I enroll uh, my kid in an intentional sports program? I want to um, teach a class. I want to mm -hmm. be a coach. All those types of requests, partnership requests go to Naomi. 
And then for um, in general, just anything about by the hand club, if you're interested in a career or you're interested um, in, you know, your child at a school and you're hoping that school can become a by the hand partner school, we would love to chat and that's reaching out uh, to me. So um, a quick overview before we open it up for um, questions and answers. So the North Austin Center, which we talked about, is three organizations in one. So we have By the Hands, we have um, the Revive Center, Grace and Peace, and um, Grace, uh, the Gap Community Center, as well as Intentional Sports, all three giving different resources and holistics in after school programming in sports and education. Uh, if you aren't looking to get involved right now, we have after school programs starting again. That coupon code is resident80. Uh, we have the Easter egg hunt on the 9th and then different community activities. If you're looking to get involved ASAP, we have the Zumba class. If you're a morning person and want to get up and come uh, walk around the turf, right? Uh, get up for morning movers or come and just enjoy the spaces for free play. And then volunteers is something that's across the board between Grace and Peace by the hand and you know ourselves at iSports. We're always looking for volunteers. So any activity that you see posted or if you have a weekend where you're free and say, hey, I would love to get involved, feel free to obviously reach out to me or um, Andrea about those volunteer opportunities because we take volunteers for um, all, all, so. So with that, we would love to hear uh, questions. Thank you so much, Andrea and Naomi. You did a fabulous job and we greatly appreciate getting to hear about all of the awesome things at this brand new center. I'm so excited for residents to get to use it, to get to take this opportunity and get engaged. This is awesome, so pumped. Um, we do have a couple questions, um, both from the Facebook chat and some pre-registered participants um, tossed their questions to us in advance. Um, so the, it looks like one of the first questions is, um, when and how does registration open for summer? So I know you just kind of went over this a little bit in terms of like the, um, the, I think it was something 80, participate 80? Yes. yes. Um, so resident 80. So Naomi okay. can take, take on for summer. Yep. Yeah. So our summer programming, intentional sports, we are happy to say we're teaming up with Grace and Peace, of course, to run that summer programming. Those details will be um, dispersed and shared in May. So be on a lookout because it's first come first serve for those registrations. So again, make sure you follow us on social media and check the websites. All of that information will be posted and you do not want to miss it. So I, I, I urge you to please sign up and make sure that you're following us on Facebook and those social media pages um, to get those communications. But that information will be out in May. And that, that's great. And definitely have some grace with us. You know, we just opened in February, so we'll get better and better and better as the years go on where, you know, I was telling Naomi before this started how the park district, it's like the Hunger Games where all the parents are like, it opened, it opened, and everybody's texting <laughs> each other. And so we'll get really good at having, you know, ahead of time, like summer registration opens up these days and we'll get, you know, better and better at it. But we're, um, this is our first year, so we appreciate everyone uh, rolling with us. And, you know, we were able to get this spring break program off the ground and we know we'll get a great program off for the summer we're just a little bit behind because of when we opened you know we opening in february is is a little tough to kind of get everything rolling so may for sure and uh we'll get better and better each year and i have another question okay so you you guys are located on like a 10 acre site just wondering is are there any future plans to continue to develop on that land and like implement more programming? Uh, that's an, ex that's that's an exciting question. Yeah, that's <laughs> a great question. So um, yes and no, there is um, limited space on the site. And there's one thing that when we did all of our community surveying and research that the neighborhood um, asked for that we were not able to deliver on, and that was outdoor play space. And we have too many outdoor fields, but that's very different than a community playground. And so I was actually, uh, one, the issue, and this is letting you all in the scoop, is um, Chicago is a swamp. So you need to have some sort of plan for water retention 
attention. And so we have something on the campus that we affectionately call the pit. And the pit is a water retention pond because frankly, we couldn't afford underground water retention. So we had a wonderful donor um, who uh, paid for me and some students from Moving Everest to go to DC and to ask the federal government for water retention uh, funds so we could cap the pit and retain the water properly and then put an outdoor turf field and a community playground. And so those are the plans as of now. And we're really hoping that we get the federal funds. You can't really raise money through a grant um, for water retention. It's really a government issue. Um, and so no donor, like, you know, we were able to get Jason Hayward and the Chicago fire, but let me tell you, the Chicago fire does not want to pay for a water pit. <laughs> um, so we we really are hoping and it's a very competitive process that we'll get these funds and the playground will be right on the Claire. So you know how La Follette Park is on Laramie. And so the playground kind of faces Laramie. And so it's not really fenced in and a little kid could run off and it's it's access to that busy street. Mm -hmm. It would be tucked on the Leclerc side. So fully lit, fully embraced in the holistic service of the campus, but access out to the sidewalk. So it'd be more like a community playground where you could just walk up and and use the space and so we're really hoping to get that because for me where I did all the community engagement and it's like it's just it's not gnawing at me to know that was one of the things on our list that we weren't able to do. There's there's a couple things there that you, you talked about that I think are pretty cool and I want to point out first of all the playground would be awesome and incredible and if you're able to make that happen I think you know if there's anything you need from us community members, whether it be calling our state reps or something, you know, anything we can do to help out to get that funding. <laughs> we will let you know for sure. Um, but you mentioned that you, you and two students who are actually involved with By the Hand had the chance to go to Washington, D.C. Can you tell us a little bit more about that experience and just other experiencing such experiences such as that that By the Hand students might be able to participate in? Yeah, so we um, at By the Hand Club, um, part of loving our kids' mind, body, and soul is exposing them to anything and everything. And we, they're the, fu the future leaders. So uh, we had this opportunity for me as a grown up to go lobby in DC. And we stopped at By the Hand and we said, well, we have to take students. We can't have a hill day and not take students. And it turns out that the eighth graders were going on a trip to DC that had been um, planned uh, for a few uh, months now. And we were able to send what we called the advanced team and the ambassadors and four eighth graders got to again at no cost fly for the very first time for all of them it was their first time flying they got to fly to uh washington dc they got to meet and speak about why they wanted outdoor space in a community playground and then um, we even got uh, tickets to go see the uh, a Senate uh, a Senate meeting. So we actually got to go into the Senate and see a Senate meeting. So it was a really exciting um, opportunity and really a shout out I will give is Congressman Davis made an hour available for the kids and he shared his life story with them and they were so inspired that the class president of moving everest rihanna she was like i think i'm gonna do what he did in my life and so it was a really um and i'm gonna share a pic a, a photo right now of the students with congressman davis but it was really special because he's their congressman um he you know grew up without electricity <laughs> and shared what that was like and then for the kids to see themselves as future leaders uh, was really inspiring. And to be in eighth grade, I did not ever lobby in, and I have a background in policy and organizing until I was probably 28. So to do it in eighth grade, the kids have a yeah. leg, a leg above. And even to go see the Senate, uh, who, who I had never, I've been to DC many times. I had never had the opportunity to go sit in the Senate and see them argue argue and debate and we got to watch them take a vote um, so it was a really um, incredible opportunity and and we do everything from taking the kids to six flags to when opportunities like that come up we just make it happen we're real entrepreneurial at by the hand and we just um if, if an opportunity comes up we make it happen so that's us with congressman davis beautiful 
and they look dress nice. Oh yeah, they look they good. good. <laughs> they look good. Yeah. I they say look- they dressed up real well. I'm really liking the jack. I don't know if those are flowers or something, but that's nice. Yeah, that, was, that was Christian, and we were um. What senator? Some a, a senator uh, that just walked by was like, "Nice jacket," and he was like, "Isn't that guy famous?" And we're like, "Yes, he is." <laughs> so uh, we got to represent Austin um, on Capitol Hill, and it was just a really special time and a special trip. Um, and we're, you know, the kids were like, "Is this going to be annual? Are we going to do this again?" And so now my wheels are spinning of what well, could we make this an annual thing, um, and we'll just have to figure out how to do that. But here, I'll show one more picture. Um, we got to go to this. Uh, it was interesting. Again, the students saying, oh, I want to go see the Supreme Court. So we were able to go to the Supreme Court and they had done their homework before they came. And my favorite part was they got to meet up with the rest of their class. And I said, well, t- you know, tell me, um, you know, how the day was. And they said, I can't wait to once everybody else gets here to brag to them about all the things we got to do that they're not going to get to do. <laughs> and um, so to, I'm like, OK, it went well. And they were inspired and motivated uh, by the trip. So really excited. West Side in D.C. Okay. Easy to next question. So as we all know, uh, religion, spirituality, faith, it plays a a huge role in the community. Just wondering, do you have to be uh, affiliated with any religion or be faith-based in order to participate in these uh, after-school programs? That is great. I'll start with by the hand, then Naomi can share about intentional sports. Absolutely not. No, we serve everyone of all different backgrounds, all different faiths, um, all different beliefs. Um, So you can be of any belief to uh, be a part of by the hand club. Uh, The interesting thing about the North Austin Center is the North Austin Center. um, I would say faith made it happen. But the North Austin Center and intentional sports are actually not religious organizations at all. So Naomi can share a little bit more about that. Yeah. And, the, you know, the point I was going to make is that we we actually are not um, a religious base. And so we we don't require anything of um, a spiritual background or any stipulations when it comes to religions. However, I would like to say um, that culture is a, a big thing here. So when you speak about Uh, religion and spirituality, I think it's very much a place of peace. It's very much a family atmosphere. And so to welcome everybody from the community is just that, Uh, whether you you believe in a higher power or whether you, you don't, or whether you're coming from who God knows where, right? We, we, we accept we accept everybody um, and we always want this place to feel again as a community place. This is somewhere uh, for our neighbors next door. It's for aunts and uncles and, and families and athletes and people who don't play sports, right? So we have an e-sports lab. Again, that's not, being athletic is not even a stipulation um, to join these yeah. programs. So yes, we, we welcome everybody. And to answer the question, no, uh, there is no religious uh, background requirement for my, any of the activities. My son will be five in a week and his favorite place in here is the stage because he could care less about sports. So a couple of times he's like, everybody sit down, I'm putting on a show. And so that's what he's into. So again, it's for everybody. And uh, some things that you'll see when you visit is uh, when we were doing our focus groups, um, when you have a facility of this size, it can feel really massive and sometimes like an eyesore or an institution. So there's um, in the lobby, a glass uh, pass through. So you can see all the way from Laramie to LeClaire. And that was intentionally done with that feedback of how do we make this feel welcoming and not like this big box, almost like an institution. So all the way from the architecture to the programs, it, we were have been thinking about for the last seven years, how do we be as inclusive and welcoming as possible? Uh, yeah. Yeah. All our signs are in English and Spanish. We have gender neutral bathrooms. We've got you know, we bathrooms with showers. Uh, we have a mother's room. Um, that's There's an elevator access. So if you have a stroller, you can get up to the mother's room. So we really, at, as much as possible, try to think how can we make this as welcoming and inclusive for all as possible. Okay. And I know you've, you've, met, you've touched on this already and you know the fact that this is an open building, everyone is welcome. Um, how can people utilize the space? So they, I know they can get involved with your programmings, but if they're interested in renting out the space, and I know you pointed out um, the gentleman's email for who's in charge of the whole center, but what does using the space look like? Can they rent it out for personal events? What is, give us the whole rundown of that. 
Sure. So I'll share a little bit. When we first designed the center and by the hand club, you know, we've been around since 2000. We're like, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be so great if kids from the street could just walk right in and play sports? And the world has changed since the 90s in which, you know, you need a waiver, an emergency contact and certain things like that. And again, it makes sense because say a child walked off walked in from the street and they hurt themselves and we don't even have anybody to call right so the registration piece um so so when we say drop in we have all these drop in basketball and hours and free time but there is that registration component and that's all for the safety of of everyone in the building for uh renting the space for personal use there's a couple different um uh areas that I'll discuss. So yes, absolutely. If you want to have a community event, um, there are some that will be a really small fee, the event. And again, that fee is will be discounted for residents and, and uh, Austin neighbors. And there are some that will just be no cost um, opportunities. Um, if there is something for profit, like you work at a company and you want to have your Christmas party here, we're a nonprofit. So that gets a little bit um, difficult if we're saying, oh, the community Zumba class can't take place because the corporate party is happening. That really jeopardizes our mission. And so there's opportunities to use the space. So things like community meetings, community events, birthday parties, um, different things like that. Absolutely. Things, things that are more corporate, really, we look at very carefully because it's just, we don't want it to be off mission. So reaching out to Ryan is, I think we had a birthday party here on Saturday. Um, so reaching out to Ryan is is the way to go. Um, and then there's different um, discounts and, and fee structures and things like that, but they're very low. Um, they're, you know, right on par or oftentimes even lower with like Riot YMCA, uh, Salvation Army, uh, those types of, com not comparable, but similar, you know, Park District, those types of similar facilities, they're lower um, or right on par with those costs. Mm -hmm. And then I'll also add, you know, for just for, you know, community members, if you're someone who lives in the community and wants access to the space, if you're talking, you know, as Andrea mentioned, a birthday party, or if you just want to come and play basketball, you and a few friends want to come play basketball or get on the turf, right? Um, the registration that I showed earlier, you want to go online and register. And what we do here is we, we like to say we, we do programming for kids. And so that is obviously a mission of ours. It's definitely a priority. And what we've done or what we try to do is protect our after school hours. So that's Monday through Thursday from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. We run that internal programming, right? How do we get the kids in here at low cost? We run that programming. If you want to come in here and utilize the space for a reservation anytime from 7 p.m. Um, until we close, you guys are able to do so online. So again, you just go on that registration link from our website. Um, you will see the space that is not being reserved and put in that request. Our front desk staff is absolutely amazing. You guys could now call our phone um, to kind of get those registrations online, ask questions. We have free play for those drop-in and people who may, maybe you don't want to, you know, an activity, maybe you just want to come in and like I said, just shoot hoops by yourself. You are able to do that. Please call, please call the front desk um, and use that, that link to see what times are open and allotted for you guys on the registration site. And I think we've got, we had one person who reached out and wanted to know if we could reshare um, Ryan's information. To anybody who's watching, we will, um, we will happily have Intentional Sports by the Hand Club for Kids and Grace and Peace Church share all those contact informations with us. And we will share those out with residents um, per request if you reach out to us. Um, on, looks like Andrea is also gonna go ahead and toss those up here on the slide real quick as well. So again, if you need any of these contact information, um, please feel free to look at them now or reach out to us here at the Austin Community Hub. We are happy to get you in contact with anybody. Um, but I did actually, and I apologize if you were going to ask a question. Um, you mentioned your front, your front desk staff. 
um, mm -hmm. and just the staff in general, as well as one of your previous slides mentioned that you were hiring. Is there an age range for employees um, and how can people who are interested in the community look at getting involved um, slash ensure that when they do reach out that, you know, they're going to be able to get in contact with someone? Sure. So for By the Hand Club, um, most of our employees are uh, over 18. You don't have to have a high school diploma for many of our jobs and positions. Um, you do need to pass a CPS uh, background check. So um, any type of uh, criminal record, unfortunately, CPS doesn't allow those folks to work with our children. Um, if you go to bythehand.org slash careers, uh, all our career information is um, up there. And if you uh, email me, hey, I applied for a position or I want to know more, um, I will forward that right over to HR. I talk to HR every day and they'll make sure that you get an interview. You can even put my name in the referred by and that's another um, in the box and that's another just checkpoint that helps your application. Um, they'll they'll know that it's someone from the neighborhood because that's kind of my, it's almost like my referral code is like you're a neighborhood resident. Yeah. Um, and then I'll say, just to piggyback off Andrea, all of our requirements align with what she said, CPS background check, right, 18 plus ideal, but I'll share a little bit more about the, the what we, who we are hiring and what we're looking for. Coaches, part-time coaches, if you want to coach baseball, basketball, volleyball, et cetera, if you have a coach um, and, and you aspire to be a coach, we're always looking for those. We're always actively accepting um, job applications. Again, you can use my name as a referral as well um, to get that in. But you want to go to our website. There's a link at the top uh, of the bar that's going to say careers. If you go in and just, yes, and the link will be shared. So you can go in and, and type in and put a request and say, hey, Naomi referred me. <laughs> I'm looking for this job position. Um, we we'll love to get in contact. So super, super simple. Send that in. Again, we're always mm -hmm. accepting applications. Um, but coaches, I think right now is one of our main priorities, but again, um, hiring across the board. Uh, one other thing to mention too, that changed a lot in the last five years. So when we started with our feasibility study of this project, um, the North Austin community was 70% black and 30% Latinx. In the last five years, it's flip-flop where 70% of the community is Latinx and 30% is African-American. And so for our programs at By the Hand, uh, we found out in January <laughs> that our partner schools are running their K through second program, complete bilingual immersion. immersion. So not all staff at uh, By the Hand needs to be bilingual, but it's definitely a plus. And so if it comes up in the process, I'm just giving you a heads up. Um, we are also hiring at our Moving Everest and Austin sites, and that requirement um, does not exist. So um, serving you know all the way from central austin to north austin and it's just kind of mind-blowing how the demographic has changed so much and we, we we found out from our partner schools they were doing full spanish emergent we were like oh wow we have to change a lot of what we do um so we're being nimble and we don't want to shell shock kids who are used to speaking spanish all day and then they come to buy the hand and we're baptism by fire in english so we've had to really look at our program and our model and think a little bit differently um because of the um, really rapid demographic change. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's uh, something you see across the board at North Austin, right? A lot of people speak Spanish. I'm even on campus <laughs> speaking, speaking a little <laughs> bit more Spanish. <laughs> yeah, literally, that's like yeah. un poquito, right? Um, so, so yeah, if, if you're bilingual, that's always, I think in any job market, yeah. it's always a plus, but especially at the North Austin, right? We want um, this to be a place where everyone's comfortable and we definitely don't want um, communication, you know, the communication mm -hmm. barrier to be uh, a, 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 an issue. Yes. What, what, well, it's not, but yes, if you're yeah. bilingual, please. Yeah, <laughs> apply. Uh, yeah, and if you're not, that's okay. Apply apply anyway, um, and we'll find the right fit and the right thing. Um, but yeah, it's just been a bit of a, a bit of a change. Okay. I think we have time for one more question. I know a lot of the young athletes and parents of athletes want to know this. Uh, will there be a pathway to success for you that wants to pursue athletics at a collegiate or a professional level? I'll start and then I'll go to Naomi. So you know, I've been doing work in Austin since uh, 2008. And a lot of people ask me, 
why Andy? Why are you bringing someone who's not from Chicago to lead sh sports in Chicago in the West Side? And the answer is the answer to that question. Andy has played sports professionally at all levels. Andy is the highest rated coach through that you can possibly be and has the highest experience that you could possibly have. And he has a network of people, even like Naomi, that um, he's been able to bring in to bring that collegiate and career sports experience that we don't have in the West Side. Um, if we had it already, it would just be duplicative. Um, so, so the answer is that's exactly what intentional sports is. Yes, there's fun opportunities. There's all sorts of just kind of more like uh, playing for the enrichment of it. But the staff and the team is specifically here because they know how to play college sports because they all played it. They know how to play professional sports because they all played it. And so that's really the answer to that question. Why Andy? Why intentional sports? Because they can do that for our students and our kids and our community. And it's something we haven't had here in Austin. Yeah, ex exactly. So it's it's really, to me, a loaded question, because like Andrea said, that is why intentional sports is here. When you think about our staff and, and the quality of everything, not just the playing spaces. So the quality in the playing spaces goes to say, hey, professionals want to be here, too. It's not just for, you know, people in the community, but people outside of the community, people that play at all levels. Everything was intentionally thought about and created and designed in a way that we could have this collaborative space and inform and build those opportunities. So every time you step in here, when you get on a court, you're going to be around someone who's played that sport, a professional, someone who's been in the business, people who can help you uh, with school development. And that's also something I get a little sneak peek. We're um, developing a high school program for kids. So it'll be application based. It'll, it'll start with 10 freshmen, right, who will have be in this program free of charge to help you grow and develop through your high school career. What does that look like? Will it be tailored to the high school student, right? You'll learn sports. You'll learn um, how to do community service. You'll learn how to work at intentional sport. What does it mean to be a staff member? You'll learn um, the process on, okay, well, how, how do I get to college? How do I um, fill out an, an application? These are things that you don't necessarily mm -hmm. get the education on. All the time's not at home and you definitely don't, usually don't get that education in schooling, right? So um, again, everything was thought about. All of our coaches are well-qualified professionals, um, professionals, professionals. Um, in the building. So that's super exciting. And that would make that's what makes intentional sports unique mm -hmm. and not just like any uh community center that you would see. I think it's probably one of a kind. It is yeah. one of a kind. Uh, so to answer yeah. your question, yes, those yeah. opportunities are here. The the last thing I'll say is one of the students who came with us to um DC, I was chatting with him and he just loves sports and uh I didn't know this and this isn't why we picked him for the trip or anything, but we were talking and he was saying, oh, I love basketball. I love basketball. I said, where do you play basketball? In Naperville. His mom is driving him from Austin to a travel team because he kind of aged out of the levels that are available in the community. And you think about all the homework that he's not getting done, There's the drag on the gas and the mom of playing competitive sports. 40 minutes to an hour away in rush hour traffic. I think Naperville and like rush hour could be like an hour and 30 minutes away just to play competitively. And it kind of gave me goosebumps and was like, that's why we did what we did. <laughs> that's why we did this. Um, and he was just chatting with me. And I, but I think that's true for so many of um, our families um, is that we're leaving the neighborhood to access amenities and now we can access them right here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I love that so much. I also, I'm not going to lie, the entire time, Naomi, as you were sitting there talking about how intentional, intentional sports had been with your planning, the whole time I was going, you you were intentional with your naming, too. Um, <laughs> you, took, you took intention in sports and community and, like, not only for your programming and building of this organization, but you put it, everything into it. So that is really great. That is awesome to hear. Um, and sadly, that is the last question we do have time for today. Um, so thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank all for you having us. We're just so excited to be here and we're excited for all that's to come. And we're excited to meet all of you who are listening in um, and to get you plugged in and connected to all the programming we have.
Of course, of course. Um, again, thank you. Thank you, Intentional Sports. Thank you, By the Hand Club. Thank you, Grace and Peace Church. Even though you weren't able to be here to join us, we are so excited to promote the center and share this information out. Anybody who is watching, please feel free. Again, you can reach out to us here at the Austin Community Hub or these two lovely ladies. Um, you are happy to reach out to them and get information. Um, our next Hub 101 will be in May. Um, and we will actually be promoting Austin Eats and we're going to be nourishing Austin with Austin Eats, talking about all of the incredible things that you can get involved with here in Austin, whether you're looking for farmer's market, whether you're looking for gardening, anything, we've got it with Austin Eats. So join us um, on May 16th for that conversation. And thank you again, everyone for joining. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us.